uh, uh, you know, somewhere around 8.30, we'll get a couple tables out and prepare a table to be able to cut up watermelon. Do I have a couple of volunteers? Just stick your hands up. One. One. Who else? One. Hey, now. What do we, two, 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 two. I got three. Four. So, thank you. All right. I did that at our family reunion. They, they were raising money for a, uh, uh, for a quilt and... Uh, you know, they were three or four hundred dollars short, and I grabbed the tickets and got up and auctioned them off. I'm not very good at it, but they got a hoot at it. They, you know, they don't go to auctions all the time. They didn't know how bad I was. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hey, listen, we're delighted that you're here. Uh, I want to let me mention one more thing. Got a Wednesday night s- series that we're doing. Uh, uh, probably the most the most views on the uh, on on twelve shares that I've ever seen online. We just had 12 shares, and it's been viewed over 800 times. We're talking about now, you may not say praise God, but as I tell you what I'm preaching, no, you probably will. You probably will. But we're talking about, uh, I'm, we're talking about the role of women. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a hot subject right now, hot subject. Now listen, it's not new. I, you know, I, I didn't just identify these things. I didn't just, you know... Uh, a long time ago, figured it out, looked to the word, studied what other people were saying, uh, and uh, under you know believe got a good handle on what the scripture says. And it's uh, many times it's uh, well, we're influenced by a bias in our culture. We've lived in a male-dominated world since the beginning of time, and that's the truth. We still live in a male-dominated world. You leave the United States. There's lots of the world that. Uh, Women live as second-class citizen. Still, in some places of the world, still cannot own property. Even in our country, it was only, it was only what, 60 or 70 years ago that women got the right to vote? Uh, but you know, Jesus, or the scripture says this. Would be, scripture says there's neither Jew nor Greek, nor bond nor free, nor male nor female, but all are one in Christ. In Christ, there is absolute equality. And so Wednesday night, I talked about, I went from Genesis all the way to Acts chapter, not every verse, you understand, all the way to to Acts chapter 2 and talked about the role of women in ministry and leadership. And uh, and again, uh, it's gotten a tremendous amount of views. Uh, This week, I will talk about the roles that you can identify, that you can see in the New Testament and you will see there are no restrictions. You'll say, well, pastor, I know what it says. It says, it says, I will not allow a woman to have authority over a man. Well, it says several things in that verse that people are not practicing. Several other things. There were problems in Ephesus that needed to be addressed. I talked about that a little bit Wednesday night, and we'll talk about it again. There is not a ministry role that a woman does not qualify for. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free nor male nor female for all and one in Christ. This is not about the current debate about gender roles. This is about equality. It's about who you are in Christ. See, for years we've allowed our women to go to the mission field and suffer, but not let them pastor. You don't have to say amen. It's okay. Yeah. You'll tr- you, 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 know, you understand, the church world will treat, treat they'll, they'll trust them with our children. Do we have anything more valuable than our children? Oh, but my goodness, don't talk into a man's life. All right, I better go on. <laughs> Wednesday night, come and, but I won't, Wednesday night, I will, I will just teach. I will not get animated. I won't, you know, because I, I, I'll, I'll just teach, okay? And uh, I, I won't throw anybody under the bus. I won't be ugly. Uh, I, I'll be a good guy. <laughs> yeah, and listen, I'm, I want to I communicate it uh, appropriately. So if you didn't hear this week's message, you, you should go listen to it, and you'll be shocked at how clear it is. Shocked. Everybody say shocked. You'd be shocked how clear it is. It's it's clear. There's nothing murky about it. All right? 
So, you know, those that believe, you know, that in the church, that, you know, they'll say, well, listen, I, you know, God loves us all the same, you know. I, uh, uh, but the man is the king of... <laughs> I better quit. <laughs> listen. Listen to this. Listen, to this. this is good stuff. You like this. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> they'll say, I'm the king of my castle. And she's the queen. The only reason they let her be the queen is so he can be the king. <laughs> now listen, I, I believe there's roles. There's differences in roles within the home. I do believe that, you know. Uh, but boy, there's tremendous responsibility with those roles. In the church, there is no differences of roles. This is the wonderful thing about being in Christ. There's nothing else like it in the world. The church should be the least segregated. It should be the least segregated. All right. So, there's that. A lot of information. I need to get to a message because they know how many slides I got back there. <laughs> Some of them I'll move through pretty quickly. This morning we want to talk about, we want to talk about good news. All right. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word and to teach and to preach your gospel. We thank you, Father, that your word's good seed when it's sown on good ground, that it produces good fruit. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah, Isaiah 52 and verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring, and everybody say, good news. Good news. Let's say it again. Good news. You know, news in many ways has a tremendous impact upon our lives. If you look at scripture now, from Malachi to Christ, there's 400 years. And during those 400 years, there's no news coming from heaven. You might say we had, you know, four centuries that were slow news days. No news coming from heaven. But news is a powerful thing. We understand news sways people. Everybody, everybody remembers where they were at the moment they knew about 9-11. Everybody. The news impacted our lives. The news changed our lives. That is true with the beginning of World War II. Everybody remembers when Pearl Harbor was bombed. If you were alive during that time. The news influences our lives. The same is true today. An election comes along and about 10 o'clock we hold our breaths hoping that they can call an election. And if they say everything's too close to call, you can hear the nation moan. I just moan. Now from Malachi to Christ, there's nothing coming from heaven. See, the evening news can alter history, but good news alters eternity. You probably didn't know this, but in Israel, they had JNN News. This was Jerusalem News Network. And there's nothing coming from heaven, but all of a sudden, here's their headline. Galilean Virgin claims... She's pregnant. Now see, news once again has what? Has a tremendous impact. But then sometime, not very long after that, there's another headline that says, Priest in hill country of Judea suddenly struck dumb. You know, Zacharias wouldn't believe. Finally, nine months later, there's another headline that says, Nine months of silence ends for priest by naming his son. Another headline comes along and some months later it says, Augusta calls for census for new tax plans. This was breaking news in Jerusalem, see. Then you have these shepherds out in the field and the headline read like this, possible UFO on the outskirts of Bethlehem. Shepherds claim sky is filled with angelic choir. 
Sometime after that, there's, there's headline that says, Magi and army camping east of Jerusalem. Yeah, Herod's concerned. Finally, headline says, Herod goes mad, ordering the death of all the boys in Jerusalem. Uh, it should have said Bethlehem, that's my typo, three and under. But then there's this, this headline, crazy baptizer in Judea preaching repentance. And finally, there's this one, young prophet from Nazareth growing in popularity. You know, for the Jews, for many years, all they had was bad news. They lived under oppression, tyranny, many of them poverty. They lived from day to day, week to week, month to month. But then this young prophet comes out of Galilee, and it's Jesus. And he brings this, he brings good news. I recently did a couple of messages on this, and we're emphasizing the, the, the issue this morning about news, how news impacts our lives, how important it is to communicate it to other people. Jesus comes back to his own hometown, and he says this. He's been to Capernaum. He's been preaching. They've been hearing all kinds of things about him. Word has spread. The news has gone before him. Jesus finds, and it says it was delivered him to the scroll, and he found the place where it was written. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel. We circle the word gospel. It's significant. It's important. This is where we get the word good news. It's also where we, dev- we uh, derive our word for evangel- evangelize. He's anointed me to preach what? Good news. Good news to who? Good news to the poor. They what? The poor people. They need some good news. The poor in spirit, they need some good news to heal the brokenhearted. They need what? They need some good news. If you listen to too much news, it will break your heart. To proclaim liberty to the captives. You know, if we gave as much time to the scripture as we give to the news, we'd be in a lot better condition in our lives. And sometimes you watch the news, you don't know what part of it you believe and what part of it you don't. You can read this news and you can believe all of it. Can you say amen? Amen. To proclaim liberty to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them a bruise to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. News simply is this. News is information not previously known. Jesus arrives on the scene and he starts preaching information not previously known. He begins to reveal about scriptures not previously understood. You know, while they are looking for a deliverer, they're looking for a messianic presence. They're looking for a messianic king, much like David. They know that he's going to be of the seed and the lineage of David. They're looking for a warrior. They're looking for a liberator. Somebody that would deliver them from the tyranny of Rome. But something different comes, someone different comes than what they're looking for. But he comes sharing and preaching good news. I told you the word gospel, it comes from a Greek word, euangelizo. It refers to this, a messenger bringing good tidings or good news. So this is the greatest thing about the gospel, is the fact that there are so many people that we got something good to share with them. They got a real need in their life. They got a real crisis in their life. They get they get a they get a real problem in their life. And the gospel has the answer. It's what it's good news. Again, we look at it. It says, "The Spirit of the Lord's upon me." I use the NIV because He's anointed me to what preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim what freedom to prisoners. Uh, yeah. They got political prisoners in their day. I've, I've got good news, he says, to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. The recovering of sight to the blind to, again, release the repress to proclaim. Listen to this. The year of the Lord's favor. 
a Greek word, eugon, galezo. It was often used this, and it was, it, it was inscribed around the Roman Empire. If a new Caesar was, came to office and there would, there would be statues, and under the statue there would be a plaque and it would have this word, we would say good news. And it say, and it said, and it says, "In good news, you 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 have the good fortune of living under the new emperor, the new Caesar." If they won a great victory, and again they would they would build something wonderful, but underneath it would say, "Good news, we defeated our enemies, our foes." It was used to describe the arrival of a king or to announce the, a victory in war, or the spoils that came with it. Well, in some way, Jesus does. We read that verse and it describes some of the benefits that come as a result. He's not just a messenger, but he's a king. See, the good news is this that Jesus comes sharing. It's a message from the king to those who live within his kingdom. Look, it says in Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 23. I like this verse. It says, Jesus went about all Galilee, Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and listen to this, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Or the good news of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. See, it is a specific message. See, you watch the news and it's, 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 it's information. You can watch it tonight. You can watch it this afternoon. You can watch it. It's It's information. But it's information often it impacts our lives and many times in negative ways. But then we read the scripture and we, we share it like it's good advice. It's much more than good advice. It's the truth. It's not just self-helps. Jesus came, what, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That is mentioned four times in the scripture in different places. He says, I've come to, I'm come and I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And then it says this, to confirm that message, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. See, the news was transforming, it was changing people's lives. I will return to Luke 4.18 once again, and the scripture says this. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I underline that. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm what? I'm the messenger. I'm the messenger of this news. I've arrived today. I'm, I'm, I'm this messianic person. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the king. It says when they're done, they said that, wow, they, they all kind of stood back and they said, wow, what gracious words that proceed out of his mouth. They're, they're really, they're, they're taken back. They're somewhat amazed. He said, the spirit of the Lord's upon me. Why is he upon me? Anointed to do this, this one thing, to preach the gospel of the kingdom, to preach good news to people. Again, Jesus arrives on the scene, but that's not just true then, it's true here. It's true today. Because truth is always this, truth is always that which is true for all people, all places, and all times. So Jesus arrives on the scene, and he begins to share news. And news has the capacity to what? First of all, to have an immediate impact upon our lives. But then news also has the ability to have a lasting impact upon our lives. Again, I return to Luke 4.18. Jesus said, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now see, when he comes and he begins to share good news to people that are poor... That is not just going to have an immediate impact upon their lives. And this is not just the poor financially, but it is the poor financially. But it's those that are a long way from God. It's those who do not know Him. 
They don't think they can reach him. They don't think they can find him. They don't think they can know him. This not only has an, uh, an immediate impact right there at that time with the people sitting there and, and, and within earshot of him. It has an immediate impact, but it also has a lasting impact. He sent me to do this thing to proclaim freedom to prisoners. Freedom to prisoners. Well, if you're a prisoner, if you're bound, if you've been unjustly imprisoned, but more importantly, if you're bound by your past, if you're bound by negative influences as a child, if you're, if you're, if you're bound by the abuse of others, Sometimes those who are, have the most influence upon your life. He sent me to what? Proclaim freedom to the prisoners. The recovery of sight to the blind. And listen, this is a big deal today because if there is ever a time that this verse right now and that statement was ever important, it's right now. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says this, If the God of this world hath blinded their minds, least they see and hear the light of the glorious gospel, and it did shine unto them. And right now we live in a world where many people are blinded from truth. They are blinded from the gospel. They're blinded from good news. Next week I'm going to share tolerating the intolerable. And we'll talk about many of the difficulties in our world today, but listen. See, here, here's, here's where I'm at you know, in, in relationship, and I believe this is what the Scripture teaches us. See, if you are bound by gender identity, if you're bound, I got good news, you can be set free. Now, see, and I believe that, Jimmy. If, if you are bound by gender identity, you can be set free. But see, we live in a world that doesn't believe you can be set free from that. But see, that is good news. Highest suicide rate is in that community. Now see, they won't get, they won't get set free if I mock them, make fun of them, marginalize them, insult them, demean them. See, we got what? For people in need, Good news. Good news. It's good news to the poor. It's, it's good news to those who need freedom. It's good news to those that are blind to truth. To release all those that are what? Oppressed. See, this is the gospel of the kingdom. It's the gospel of the kingdom. I like the last part of that. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. For the, for the Jews it was this, it was Jubilee. I, again on Wednesday nights I taught this not very long ago. But for the Jews it was Jubilee. And in the 50th year, in the 50th year, everybody got a year off. Yeah, I'm coming up. I'm going to get a year off. I am real close to, uh, next year will be 40 years, I will have pastored. But in the 50th year, everybody got a year off. And in the 50th year, everybody's debts were forgiven. All lands went back to the families that God originally distributed it to. All indentured slaves were set free. Everybody's debt was canceled. Now at this point, in, you, this will not shock you because this is the nature of government. At this point, they are no longer practicing this principle. But Jesus can forgive all sin. And he can set every captive free. See, within the kingdom, 
from that day to this. See, this, this news is not just immediate, but this news is ongoing. We continue to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. See, Jesus comes up, you know, sharing this message. Remember, they stand back and there's a, whoa. Listen to the gracious words proceed out of his mouth. Now, it's not like they're unfamiliar. This is Isaiah, the 61st chapter, I believe, verses 1 and 2. He's quoting it. I guess this, you'd like this, all right? You know, if I put everything in there, we'd never get done. And I'd better get back, right, or I won't get done. You know what I mean? But when you get to the end of Isaiah 61, there's one, there's just one thing that's not in there. The year of the Lord's vengeance. You know why? Because that's after we're gone. We're not suffering vengeance. We live in a time of what good news. Now, I'm all for telling people there is a day. Judgment's coming. Wrath's coming. But the message right now to set people free is this in Luke, the fourth chapter. This is Jesus' mission. It's his purpose. It's the gospel of the kingdom. See, news, do, news does this. News can change your reality. Again, I say that I go back to 9-11. On 9-11, everybody knows where they were. They know how they felt. I was sitting here. There's nothing there. You know where the rocks are set across the driveways here on the edge of town? Used to be a restaurant there. That restaurant was called Mom's Kitchen. I was there. I was walking to the counter. And the guy standing there, he says, oh my goodness, look at this. And we're watching the plane circle the building. And then they're saying it looks like they're flying into the building. And they do. I remember silence. Oh, a gasp, then silence. And then it dawned on everybody. We're at war. It was a Wednesday, I remember... Coming to church on Wednesday night, it was, it was heavy. It was difficult. It wasn't, wasn't an easy day. And how that changed the world forever changed security. Before then, we'd go to the, you know, you'd go to the airport and you'd walk your loved one all the way to the gate, you know, and uh, gosh, if you, you, know, you had somebody, you know, a brother or a sister or a mom or a dad, you'd walk them all the way to the gate and they'd start to board and you could hug and kiss and cry a little bit and that changed everything. Yeah. See, news can change your reality. But this is good news. And this news changes their reality. Not just now, but moving forward. Again, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach this what? This, this good news, this gospel of the kingdom. We've got a king who comes and he's got a different message. He's not preaching war. And listen, I know we live in a fallen world that there's times that, that for us in the natural war is a, a necessary thing. Nobody rejoices in it. I don't think the scripture teaches that you must be a pacifist. But when we talk about the message of the kingdom, it's good news. He anointed me to preach good news. I like what the, the message Bible reads this way. At one point there, Jesus says, he sent me to announce pardon to prisoners. Pardon to prisoners. I got two friends that have been pardoned. Two of them. Different times in their lives before they came to Christ. One of my friends has received a full pardon. He can vote again. He can, carry a, he can even carry a handgun. He's an evangelist. His name's Randall Greer. Randall Greer has been, received a, a full pardon. From the governor. Yeah, but you and I, we, we live what we we live in a day right now. See that this is the thing that we have to be able to share with people is what is good news. See, a lot of people live in prison. A prison is anybody who's deprived of liberty for whatever reason that might be. You know, a lot of people are walking around. You know, we would say they're walking around free, but they're still held against their will. They are still confined by various restraints in their lives. They're what? They're imprisoned. 
Jesus says, I come to pardon them, to, to release them to, for, from prison, to, to, to forgive, to, to no longer require this punishment or restitution. See, he took all of that. I want you to think about something. Uh, we read there in Isaiah, how lovely are the feet of them that bring good news. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of them that bring good news. And while Jesus didn't raise up a, an army and, and lead a revolt against Rome, I mean, he fully fulfills the scripture. He is the king. And such horrific means, it's demonstrated, but it is demonstrated. See, because his beautiful feet marched up a hill called Calvary. At the whipping post, they put a crown on him, even if it was a crown of thorns. They wrapped a robe around him. The battle was awful, it was bloody, but he wins. He come to preach pardon and to deliver us from the punishment that's coming. But you know, in his absence, this good news, news always requires this, news requires a messenger. News requires a messenger. Look at this in Luke, the first chapter, verses 19 and 20. The angel Gabriel is standing before uh, Zacharias. He's telling him they're, they're going to have a son. He's going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. At this point, they're up in age, and he's a little taken back. He, he doesn't think him and Elizabeth are, can have any kids, and, and now they're a little too old to be having kids. But the angel comes to him and he said, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. It was what sent to speak to you. See, somebody's got to carry the message. That was already true, but somebody's got to communicate this. And, and they sent me the same word. Here it says glad tidings. Sent me to bring good news to you. You're going to have a son. In Luke, the second chapter, this is one of our headlines, and the shepherds are out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night, and suddenly the angel of the Lord appears in them and said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you again what good tidings or good news. One translation says, Good news with great comfort, good tidings of great joy. When we use this, when this word, good news, you, again, it's almost always used in relationship to communicating information that the king wants to tell to the subjects. Well, this is God communicating with us. When it says good news, it's, it, it means of the highest kind, the most important news. I bring you what's some of the most important news. I bring you great news. It's going to bring great joy, which will be to, he says, to, to, to all people. Again, news always requires this. News always requires a messenger. Yeah, always needs a messenger. In John, the fourth chapter, you know the story well. And the, there's the, the story of the woman at the well. And Jesus and the disciples are traveling uh, through Samaria. Jesus stops at, uh, you know, there at uh, Jacob's well. And uh, he sends them on to get something to eat. He sits there. A woman shows up. He asks her for something to drink. She's taken back. He's a Jewish man. Jews, the Jewish people saw themselves as much better, much more superior. See, racism, bigotry has always been a problem in humanity. On top of that, he's a man speaking to who? A woman. A woman. She's not only a Samaritan, but she's a Samaritan woman. He should twice be removed. But what? He's Christ. He's come to set captives free. He's come to set things straight. See, if you go to the book of Genesis, it says he created them male and female, and he gave them dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and everything that creepeth upon the earth. They were what? They were created equal. Jesus come to restore things, to make things right. Comes, come, uh, uh, and so he, he communicates with her, and he tells her what true worship is. And he says, and where you worship is not as important as how you worship. It's not Jerusalem that's important. It's not this well that's important. 
It's not that it's a Baptist that's important. It's not a charismatic that's important. It's not a Methodist that's important. It's how you worship. It's who you worship. Who do you worship? You worship the Father. How? In spirit and in truth. It's not the where. He continues to speak to her. Begins to talk to her about her marital relationships. Says, well, you've had four husbands, the one you're with now is not. And she's taken back. She runs to town. She runs to town. What is she? She's a messenger. She says, come see a man who told me all things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? See, this is a woman. She's a prisoner who needs pardon. She's a prisoner who needs pardon. And she runs back because she's excited about what Christ did in her lives. And you see this theme repeat itself throughout the Gospels. People set free and are excited about what Christ is doing in their lives. They can't help but share it. Today, far too many times, Christians act like they're secret agents. She run to town. She's the person who's been helped. She's been set free. Come see a man who, who told me all things I ever did. Again, could this be the Christ? The whole town shows up. Again, it says, how beautiful upon the, the mountains are the feet of them that bring good news. This un, unnamed Samaritan woman. She's got beautiful feet. Because to her community, she carried good news. See, news has the ability for people that you're dealing with in life and you see people who are struggling. See, people don't just need to lose a few pounds. People don't just need another self-help book. People don't just need good advice. People need good news. Now again, we can always share something that will impact their lives in the present, but we're talking about something that will impact their lives in eternity, that will change their lives, transform their lives. This woman brought news to her community, that brought change to her community. Again, this woman's got beautiful feet because she, what? she carried good news. So the wonderful thing when we're talking about this, this message, it's good news to everyone. I heard a guy tell this story as a minister. This minister tells a story. He's from England. He's in the United States. He's speaking at a conference. Now, we're, we have rugby at a few places, and there are a few places that you can find that people you know, play rug, rugby, but there's probably very few people in this room who have ever watched a full rugby game. But in England, rugby is their football. And so he's in the United States, and, and, and England is playing Australia for the world championship. At 1 o'clock in the morning, he calls his daughter. She says, what's the score? She says, well, the game's very close. We're tied. It's late in the game. He lays back down. He's so anxious. He wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He calls his daughter again. He said, he said, how's the game? She said, she's so excited. She says, we won, we won, we won at 3 o'clock in the morning. He's whooping and hollering in his hotel room, but nobody else cares. <laughs> nobody else in the hotel cares. He thinks, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go downstairs and tell one of the porters. But he thinks that. They don't care. Finally, at 5.30, he is, he's laid in bed as long as he can stand. Then he gets up and he goes to breakfast. He's sitting there. Surely there's somebody I can share this, this good news with. But the truth is, nobody's interested. Finally, he says, somebody comes in that I could share with, but it's an Australian. 
He's not interested either. See, we have something that everybody is interested in. It's good news to what? To everybody. It's good news to everybody. We find this real unlikely character in Scripture. He's called the madman of the Gadarenes, the demoniac. He didn't just have a spirit, he had evil spirits. Called itself Legion. They cross, they, they cross the, the, the Sea of Galilee, they go to the other sides, they, they go to the country of Granat or the Gadarenes. They climb out of the boat, and here comes this guy, man. He's been living outside. He, he doesn't have a stitch of clothes in. He's what you call buck naked. He'd been running through cockle burrs and briars. He's just a mess. He's probably got, you know, he's got beard. He's got stuff in his hair. He, he's probably got scars on his arms. They tried to tie him, chain him, rope him. They couldn't keep him. He'd break him. He's a crazy man. And everybody lives in fear of this man. Well, you know, Jesus come to what? To set the captive free. He casts Legion out. Legion runs, goes into a, a herd of swine and they run over the cliff. And they drowned. Well, when this happens, listen to me. How many times you hear somebody say, well, I went to a church service and that scared me. You think that's the first time that's ever happened? Hello, hello, they're scared. The whole town does show, show up, but the whole town says, please leave, please leave. Well, now this, this, this demoniac, this madman, he's set free, he's set and he's eaten, he's clothed in his right mind. And Jesus is about to leave. Of course, he's been requested to leave. Please leave. You're not welcome here. And he says, let me go with you. I'm going to go where you go. I'm going to sleep where you sleep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow you. And Jesus said, no. No, you, you stay here. And look what he says in Luke 8, 39. Return to your own house. Tell what great things that God has done for you. It went his way, proclaiming throughout the whole city these great things, this good news that Jesus had done for him. Now, that's a great story. I want you to see how powerful it is. See, the gospel is already true and the news has already been written, but somebody's got to herald that news. Somebody's got to share it with someone else. And you have to share it with people who are in need. See, those that are whole, they don't think they need a physician. They, they, I, don't, I don't have any need. You've heard how many times you heard me say, man's greatest revelation is this, that he has a need. Everybody's needy, but not everybody sees it. But you find somebody in need and you'll find them pretty receptive. Especially when you tell them what God did in your life. How the good news changed you, helped you, delivered you, transformed you. Jesus does return to Garnett. I had to go back across the lake. They, they were not very receptive. But when he goes back, revival breaks out. But why does revival break out? Because of this madman of the Gadarenes. This man who has been set free. This prisoner who has experienced release. This blind man who the blinders came off his eyes. Look at it says in Mark the 6th chapter, verses 53 and 54. Now when they had crossed over, they came to the rand of Gennesaret. And anchored there. And then they came out of the boat and immediately the people recognized him. They ran, they ran through the whole surrounding region and begin to carry beds of those that were sick to wherever they heard that he was. It was a much different reception than when he left. This is the result. You know, a lot of people are mad at God. There are people that are angry at God. There are people that are afraid of God. 
what they need is somebody who's had a transforming experience in how God has helped them in their lives. They ran through the whole region and began to carry and bring the sick and the infirmed in droves. Wherever he entered the villages or city of that country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him. They begged him to leave now. They're begging him to pray. They begged him that he might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as had touched him, they were made whole. Again, I'm telling you, news has the capacity to impact lives. The evening news may impact your life today and maybe for several tomorrows. But the good news will change a person's life for eternity. For eternity. I used to do this all the time, and at the end of the message, we would have these, these take-it-home points. Jeff and I talked about this a few weeks ago. We realized that... Uh, Again, if you read our Faith Matters, that uh, summer's a busy time. People are in and out of church. And lots of our church family will listen to the message. But you know, it's one thing to listen to the message and another thing to think about it, contemplate it, mull it over again. So here's some questions. Here's some questions. These are things that you can discuss with your children. These are experiences you can tell with your children. Again, I've done a lot of faith at home in years gone by. Work with Focus on the Family for three years. We learned this, and listen, and this was a revelation during this time. We did lots of research. I was, <clears throat> was honored to be a part of that. We would bring in the church's best, their finest. The pastors, the elders, the deacons, the leaders, the associates. We'd put them in a room. We'd talk to them. Here's one of the questions we developed. We'd ask them. You know, you, you try just find, when you're trying to locate people, you've got to ask good questions. This is one of the questions Leon will remember. He, he attended at least one of those sessions. And we would ask them, have you ever told your children how you came to faith in Christ? And sometimes in a room with 150 people, you might find two pastors, leaders, Elders, ministry heads. You might find one or two in the whole room that talked about their faith with their children. See, we got good news and we're not even telling our children what the good news is. I'm not, I'm not a guy that silence bothers him. I realize when, you, when people are quiet, they're thinking. Uh, I think thinking is really healthy. I, I don't like it when preacher says, oh, where's the amen? I don't need an amen right now. Take these questions. Share how a piece of news that impacted your life. It had, didn't have to be the evening news. It could be something you, you know. I had a friend ha had come home one night and had to tell his wife, I got laid off. They had mortgage. They had bills. That piece of news changed their lives. I know somebody had, had a spouse come home one night and I just out of the blue, you don't understand these things don't really happen out of the blue, but out of the blue they said, we're done. That piece of news changed their lives. Share how a piece of news impacted your life. Talk about, did it influence your decisions? Of course, we want to turn the corner. Now, how has the good news of the gospel, how has it changed your life? It's a great time as a parent to tell your child maybe how you got saved or how you got set free or how you got delivered from drugs or how you came out of promiscuity. You understand age appropriate, age appropriate. But how did the gospel, how did the good news, how did that change your life? And then finally, as a family, think about who should you share that good news with? Again, news is something that is supposed to be heralded, shed, spread. One of the keys to a free society is a free press. We struggle with that at times in our country. But it's still the freest place in the world. I thank God for the United States. 
But we must freely share what? Freely share the gospel. Quit acting like as people of faith that we're secret agents. What we are is ambassadors of the highest kind. Ambassadors of Christ. We get to be a reflection of who he is in the world. And do just like Jesus did. You know, share good news with them. Again, if they're poor, if, they're, you know, if they're, they feel like they're a long way from God, you, say, you let them know that God is not very far away. He's very present. He wants to help them. If they're bound, you don't have to be bound. But don't just tell them they don't have to be bound. Grab their hand and pray with them. Pray with them. If you're in Walmart, pray with them. Don't, ever, you know, don't tell people you pray with them. You know? I, I, that's one of those things. I, I, that's enough. I, I won't say anymore. Pray with them. Don't make it a good intention. And thank God for good intentions. I like good intentions better than bad ones. Don't you? Yeah. But don't just let it be a good... Don't let it just be a, a, a slight, polite comment that we make. Sometimes we too casually say, I will pray for you, and then that's the, that's the end of that thought. We, our intention was good. We, we, we're saying, I sympathize with you. I care about your circumstances. Care enough to share good news. This is the thing that sets people free. This is the thing that brings deliverance. It's not just good advice. It's good news. This is the year of the Lord's favor. We live in that time. It continues to be the year of the Lord's favor. Think about who it is that you can share good news with. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share today and how grateful we are. We're thankful, Father, that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. And Father, we do believe that it is truth that sets people free. Thank you, Father God. We believe that this morning, that as people here, right now, or listening online, or as they listen, after this service is over, thank you, Father God, that you sent your Son. How lovely was his feet. The feet that walked up Golgotha, the feet that had a spike driven in them. There was a bloody conflict, and thank you, Father, that your son settled the conflict and won the battle. With every head bowed, no one's looking around. You, you might be here this morning, and maybe you've never made a decision concerning God's son, Jesus. One of the most important decisions you can make in life is the one. Well, I won't say one of. It is the most important decision. As important as a career might be, oh, and how important it is to choose a spouse, a mate in life. How important it is to, to have children. Making that decision about what we're going to do with Jesus' son is the most important decision that we can possibly make. Have you ever said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me, cleanse me, forgive me. I accept you now. It's my Lord. It is my Savior. If you've never done that, we'd like to give you an opportunity to do that. See, the good news is, is you can repent. You, you can turn. You can turn from sin and you can turn to Jesus. You can turn from darkness to life. We'd like to give you an opportunity to do that. I love sharing with people, you know, that the truth is everybody wants a Savior, but not everybody wants to change their lives. Not everybody wants a new Lord over their lives. You know, change comes when you begin to follow and surrender to someone different, and that being Jesus Christ. Change comes when you make Him the Lord of your life. And that's what the prayer does. Prayer doesn't save you. The commitment in your heart, the decision to follow Him, so we're going to pray and we're going to invite everyone to pray with us. And if you're listening online, you can pray too. Would you say this with me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus. I believe that He lived. I believe that He died. I believe He died for me. I believe He walked up a mountain called Calvary. There he took my punishment. 
There he died and gave up his life. I believe he was buried and raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I call you my Lord. I do give you all my sin, my hurt, my habits. I lay them all at the cross. But I also give you my life, my gifts, my talents, my treasure. I give you everything. Jesus, you are my Lord. And I thank you for saving me now. Grateful to be a part of your kingdom, a part of the Father's family. I accept you now. In Jesus' name, amen. With every head bowed, no one looking around, you might be here this morning and say, Pastor, that's me. When you prayed, I prayed. I either didn't know the Lord, and this morning I prayed. I, I, I asked him to come into my life. Or second of all, you might say, Pastor, I've known, I've known him, but I've wandered. And I wasn't living like he's the Lord of my life, but I've recommitted, I've reaffirmed my faith this morning. If that's you on either one of those, intent, those invitations, just no one else looking around, just look up real quick, say, Pastor, that's me. When you prayed, I prayed also. Just a moment to look around the room. Thank you, Jesus. All right then, thank you. Thank you. Amen. If you're listening online, I always encourage people to do this. Tell somebody. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, tell somebody. He'll not be ashamed of you before the Father if you'll not be ashamed of Him but in front of men. If He's he's your Lord, you'll be like that woman. You'll be excited to tell somebody about what He's done for you. Can you say amen? Let's stand to our feet this morning. preach just a few moments longer than I should. If you're here this morning and you've got a need in your life, just slip your hand up right there where you're at. You've got a need in your life, you're sick, you need prayer, right, right, right back here, folks. Two or three of you ladies gather around. Alice there, did I see another hand? Wave your hand at me if I didn't see it. Did you wave your hand, Miss Jeremy? No. All right. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you that you're a very present help. And Father, whatever Alice's request is, I believe, Father, that you hear her heart's cry. Father, the word says the righteous cry and you deliver us from all of our troubles and all of our sorrows. Many are the challenges, the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. And Lord, we thank you. I thank you that you're a very present help. Lord, we're agreeing together right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, Tuesday evening, we'll, we'll have fireworks here. They won't start. You don't need to come You don't come until it gets dusk unless you're just wanting to come and barbecue or something like that. You're welcome to do it. All we'll have is water and well, watermelon here. Then at the end of the evening, we do need a few folks to stay and to help us to pack and put everything away. It's essential.